Hello guys, welcome back. Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmed, and today we uh, will discuss the final portion of the chapter, uh, Cell as a Unit of Health and Disease. So today we are going to read about the stem cells. So let us start with the stem cells. So actually during development, the stem cells give rise to all the various differentiated tissues. In the adult organism, stem cells will replace the damaged cells and maintain tissue population as individual cells within them undergo replicative senescence due to attrition of telomeres. So, in simple words, what are stem cells? Stem cells are those cells which gives rise to nearly all our tissues, body tissues, different tissues of our body. So stem cells can undergo uh, a division in two ways. Either they can go for self-renewal or they can go for something called as asymmetric division. So what is self-renewal? Self-renewal ka matlab kya hai? So the self-renewal means that one stem cell will divide into another stem cell, into two different stem cells. Okay, so the product of this cell division will give rise to two stem cells. Whereas asymmetric division ka matlab kya hota hai? So asymmetric division means that one daughter cell will enter a differentiation pathway and give rise to mature cell while the other remains as stem cells. Means one daughter cell will remain the characteristics of the stem cell while as the other daughter cell will enter a differentiation pathway giving rise to more mature cell. Now let us look at the fate of the stem cells. Ki bhai, hamara stem cells kaise aage padta hai? So ek to we know that our stem cells have the capacity for self renewal. Okay, it can give rise to other stem cells or it can give rise to a baseline cell population. Now this baseline cell population again can give rise to it to its own population or it can enter differentiation pathways as follows it can undergo proliferation or it can undergo differentiation or it can undergo cell death or apoptosis so looking at this uh, uh, flow chart as we see the stem cells they give rise to a baseline cell population or they itself have the capacity for self-renewal. Now this baseline population can again give rise uh, uh, to same baseline population. That means the baseline cell population has a capacity of a self-renewal or it can enter into more differentiated pathways. It can undergo differentiation, it can undergo proliferation and it can also undergo cell death or apoptosis. So once again, the stem cells gives rise to baseline cell population. The baseline cell population can itself undergo self-renewal or can give rise to proliferation, differentiation and cell death by apoptosis. Now there are two main kinds of stem cells. One is the embryonic stem cells and in the next slide we are going to discuss about the tissue stem cells. Now let us first understand about the embryonic stem cells. Now the embryonic stem cells are the most undifferentiated kind of cells and they are present in the inner cell mass of the blastocyst. They have limitless capacity of renewal and they are also known as totipotent stem cell. So I repeat, the embryonic stem cells are the most undifferentiated stem cells present in the inner cell mass of the blastocyst having limitless capacity of renewal also known as totipotent stem cell. So let us see this flow chart. These totipotent stem cells are present in the zygote. These give rise to the inner cell mass which forms the blastocyst and these inner cell mass give rise to what is also called as the pluripotent stem cells. This pluripotent stem cells has two pathways. Okay, So in one pathway these stem cells can give rise to multipotent stem cells which give rise to more lineage committed stem cells meaning these stem cells have a more fixed or a more committed pathway means they give rise to definite structures. So they give rise to differentiated cells leading to formation of endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm. Another very important thing about these plurip cells is this that whenever these pluripotent stems are placed in any cultured medium can give rise to different types of tissues like hepatocyte, like neurons, like cardiomyocytes, hematopoietic cells as well as pancreatic 
stem cells, islet cells. So let us see the points again. These embryonic stem cells are the most undifferentiated cells present in the inner cell mass of the blastocyst, having limitless capacity of self renewal and also known as totipotent stem cells. These totipotent stem cells are present in the zygote, and from there, these form the inner cell mass the stage is called as blastocyst from this arises the pluripotent stem cells now the pluripotent stem cells has two pathways okay one they can go towards multipotent stem cells towards a more lineage committed stem cells giving rise to differentiated cells in the endoderm mesoderm and ectoderm and another pathway uh, uh, is that that if we culture the pluripotent stem cells it can give rise to different types of body tissues or cells like the hepatocytes neurons cardiomyocytes hematopoietic cells and pancreatic islet cells now this is a beautiful diagram of what i have already explained you can see the totipotent stem cells also called as the embryonic stem cells in the zygote stage giving rise to the inner cell mass the blastocyst cyst uh, stage that gives rise to the pluripotent stem uh, cell stage now as we can see the pluripotent stem cells has the capacity of self renewal and it can go in two ways either it can go towards a more lineage committed pathway in the form of multipotent stem cells giving rise to lineage committed stem cells that gives rise to differentiated cells in the endoderm mesoderm and ectoderm Another pathway is that if we culture these pluripotent stem cells, these cells can give rise to different body tissues, example, the pancreatic islet cells, hematopoietic cells, cardiomyocytes, neurons, as well as hepatocytes. Now, uh, first we spoke about the embryonal stem cells. Now we speak about the tissue stem cells or the adult stem cells, means these are those stem cells which are present in adults. Okay, so they are protected in stem cell niches means different different organs of our body are having certain locations called as the stem cell niches which harbor the stem cell. For example, the liver stem cells are present in a place called as the canal of herring. Okay, the neural stem cells are present at the dentate gyrus and the subventricular zone of the brain. The skin stem cells are present where in the bulge region of the hair follicles plus in the basal layers of the epidermis. In the cornea, as we all know, the stem cells are present at the limbus, whereas in the small intestine, they are present above the panate cells. So, uh, some few points about the tissue stem cells. They produce cells of same tissue type. Okay, so these are more differentiated. Kehne ka matlab hai that a liver stem cell will give rise to hepatocytes. Okay, a neural stem cell will give rise to neurons. Okay, a skin stem cell will give rise to the, the skin cells. The corneal stem cells uh, will give rise to uh, the eye, the cells of the eye. Whereas the uh, intestinal stem cells will give rise to the intestinal cells. So, can I come up that these are more differentiated stem cells? They give rise, uh, uh, they form cells of same tissue type uh, in comparison to the embryonic stem cell, which forms many types of uh, 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 tissue types from a single stem cell. Now, coming back to stem cells, an example being the hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, uh, uh, they are present where in the bone marrow and also in the blood after we give CSF. CSF means colony stimulating factors. Okay, so hematopoietic stem cells can be found in the bone marrow and also it can be found in the blood after giving colony stimulating factors. Now mesenchymal stem cells are present in the bone marrow chondrocytes, osteocytes, myocytes, as well as adipocytes. So, there are two kinds of stem cells, one being your embryonic stem cell, which can give rise to many different tissue types, whereas the tissue stem cells or the adult stem cells produces cells of the same tissue type. Now, this is a very nice diagram. We can see we can see uh, uh, this is the hair follicle and how and this is the skin and how the skin stem cells are present in the epidermal basal layers epidermal basal layer whereas in the hair follicle they are present in the hair follicle bulge so the hair follicle bulge harbors the stem cells 
Now, if you look at the intestinal cells, uh, uh, the intestinal cells are also having the stem cells, the crypt cells. These are forming the stem cells. If you are wondering this diagram, this are the canal of herring, the thick arrow. They are actually the canal of herring which harbors the hepatocytic stem cells or the liver stem cells which give rise to hepatocytes. And they are actually staining brown with IHC stains, cytokeratin 7. Now, there is something called as the regenerative medicine, the concept called as regenerative medicine. It means what? Let us see. It is actually the production of an induced pluripotent stem cell means we are inducing the production of pluripotent stem cell. Let us see what is happening in this. Over here, the patient's cell and the genes for stemness, that means the genes that give the property of stem cells are mixed with the patient cell and then both of them are kept in a culture. What happens that the patient's cells are induced to form pluripotent stem cells that is called as the patient specific induced pluripotent stem cells and then again as we all know the pluripotent stem cells can form multipotent stem cells and can differentiate into more differentiated cells of the ectoderm, endoderm as well as the mesoderm. So the basic concept over here is that the patient cells are uh, induced with the properties of stem cells artificially in a culture to form a patient specific induced pluripotent stem cells. As we can see in this diagram, how a patient cell and the genes which are providing the property of stem cells are placed in a culture in vitro and this induces the property of uh, 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 a patient specific induced pluripotent stem cells meaning that are gaining the properties of stem cells okay and they again give rise to more differentiated tissues in the ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm now coming to transcription factors a very small mcq a very important uh, thing to understand is that the transcription factors which aise hote hain that increases the growth and there are certain transcription factors which decreases growth if you see the ones which are increasing the growth are the mic and jun uh, whereas the transcription factors which are decreasing growth are P53. Now let us read about the growth factors. Growth factors का क्या काम होता है? Growth factors का main काम क्या है? Growth, differentiation, migration and synthesis. So four main functions of growth factor is to cause growth, differentiation, migration and synthesis. Now uh, we are going to read about the different kinds of growth factors. उनके source क्या है? What are the functions? What are the receptors of those? So there are different kinds. So सबसे पहला ए we have EGF receptor family. Now this comprises of two growth factors. One is EGF which stands for epidermal growth factor. Another one is TGF or transforming growth factor. If you look at the source of EGF, those are the active macrophages, keratinocytes and salivary glands. Whereas the source of TGF alpha is active macrophages as well as keratinocytes. The functions of epidermal growth factor is it is mitogenic means it causes mitosis or induces mitosis in keratinocytes and in fibroblast it also stimulates the keratinocyte ka migration and it also helps in formation of granulation tissue so three important functions of egf one being mitosis for keratinocytes and fibroblast stimulating keratinocyte migration and third is granulation tissue formation whereas if you look at the function of tgf alpha they are mainly stimulating the proliferation of hepatocytes and also other epithelial cells so this was number one Number two or B, the second growth factor is the hepatocyte growth factor, also called as the scatter factor. Kaha kaha milta hai, what is the source? The source being the fibroblast, the stroma, liver cells, the endothelium. And what is the function? First of all, it is a hepatocyte growth factor, so it will obviously cause the proliferation of hepatocytes. Second function being it promotes the cell migration. Third function being it also it's an embryonic development. And the receptor for this is MET. MET is the receptor for hepatocyte growth factor. On what is the clinical application of this MET that such receptors are increased in papillary thyroid carcinomas as well as in renal cancers. The third 
और जो तीसरा वाला जो हमारा ग्रोथ फैक्टर है उसका नाम है पी डी जी एफ दैट इज प्लेटलेट डिराइव ग्रोथ फैक्टर सो वट आर दोर्सेज ऑफ दिस दे आर द प्लेटलेट ऑब्वियसली प्लेटलेट डिराइव ग्रोथ फैक्टर तो प्लेटलेट हो गई एक्टिवेटेड माइक्रोफाज स्मूथ मसल सेल्स एंड द एंडोथेलियम वट इज द बेसिक फंक्शन ऑफ प्लेटेड डिराइव ग्रोथ फैक्टर सो देर आर थ्री मेन फंक्शन एज यू कैन सी नंबर वन इट इज कीटेक्टिक फॉर न्यूट्रोफिल्स फाइब्रोप्लास्ट एंड माइक्रोफेज एंड स्मूथ मसल सेल्स ओके कीमोटेक्टिक का मतलब क्या है द वर्ड कीमोटेक्टिक मीन्स दैट इट विल अट्रैक्ट न्यूट्रोफिल्स फाइब्रोब्लास्ट माइक्रोफाज एंड स्मूथ मसल सेल्स वेर एवर दे आर रिक्वायर्ड दे आर यूज फॉर ई सी एम सिंथेसिस वॉट इज ई सी एम ई सी एम स्टैंड फॉर for extra cellular matrix and third most important function is it stimulates the proliferation of fibroblast endothelial cells as well as smooth muscle cells what are the receptors for pdgf or for platelet derived growth factor they are pdgf receptor alpha and pdgf receptor beta now the third growth factor has become is d that is the vegf or vascular endothelial growth factor now there are many different kinds of vascular endothelial growth factor like vascular endothelial growth factor a b c and d so this vascular endothelial growth factor among them the most important is vascular endothelial growth factor a or vegf a another important vegf is vigf now what are the source of the vegf is the mesenchymal cell so what are the source the source is the mesenchymal cell and what are the functions let us see function number 1 they are helping in angiogenesis angiogenesis meaning is new blood vessel formation after injury and also in tumor cells okay and uh, uh, vegf a contributes maximum to this function okay the second function is it helps in embryonic vessel development okay and in this vegf b and pigf plays an important role the third is in general angiogenesis and lymphangiogenesis in the entire body uh, uh, in a normal situation okay so for this vegf c and d contributes maximally the fourth important function is maintenance of normal adult endothelium and the fifth important function being vascular dilatation and increased vascular permeability what are the receptors for vegf as we see the receptors for vegf being vegf r and ye bhi teen tarah ke hote hain vegf r1 vegf r2 and vegf r3 so i repeat so the receptor for vegf are the vegf r receptor and there are three main kinds vegf receptor 1 2 and 3 now among these three uh, the most important receptor is the vegf r receptor number 2 because it is most important for angiogenesis and it is present in increased amounts in the endothelium so i repeat the vegf r receptor number 2 is the most important vegf and it is most important for angiogenesis and the levels are increased in the endothelium now what is the most important stimulus for vegf sabse important stimulus kya hai vegf ke liye hypoxia and other stimulus for vegf production being other growth factors like pdgf and tgf alpha so i repeat the most important stimulus for vegf production is hypoxia it is most important now coming to the fifth growth factor that is fibroblast growth factor again the sources over here are the macrophages mast cells and endothelial cells now fibroblast growth factor can be of three main types one is the acidic fibroblast growth factor afgf fgf1 another one is the basic fibroblast growth factor or bfgf or fgf2 and third one is fgf7 or kgf what are the main functions of the fibroblast growth factor again they are chemotactic and mitogenic for fibroblast so they are chemotactic means they attract the fibroblast at the sites where wound healing is required they are also playing an important role in angiogenesis they also contribute towards extracellular matrix protein synthesis and they have a role in hematopoiesis now number f transforming growth factor beta this is one of the most important uh, growth factors and there are three main types as we see tgf beta 1 tgf beta 2 and tgf beta 3 as we see the most important tgf beta 1 Uh, uh, uh sorry the most abundant tgf is tgf beta 1 and the source of all these tgf being the platelets 
T lymphocytes, macrophages, endothelial cells, keratinocytes, fibroblast and smooth muscle cells. Coming to the function of TGF beta, it is chemotactic for leukocytes and fibroblast. It is also helping in extracellular matrix synthesis. The most important thing about this growth factor is that it suppresses acute inflammation. This is an important MCQ that comes always. Okay, and this is also the growth factor which is involved in scar formation after injury. Plus it is responsible for fibrosis in organs like the lungs and the kidney in case of chronic inflammation. So I repeat these functions which are very important. They play an important role in chemotaxis for leukocytes and fibroblast, extracellular matrix uh, protein synthesis, suppression of acute inflammation and scar formation after injury. Now, what are the receptors for this? The receptor for TGF beta is TGF beta type 1 and type 2, and they are stimulating SMAD4, which may increase or decrease transcription. So, with this, we have completed all the growth factors. Coming to the next topic extracellular matrix. What is this extracellular matrix? This extracellular matrix is forming the interstitial matrix and it is also giving rise to the basement membrane. So the material present in the interstitial matrix and in the basement membrane are itself the extracellular matrix. If we speak about the interstitial matrix, they are produced from the mesenchymal cells, example fibroblast. And what are the components of this interstitial matrix? They consist of fibrillar and non-fibrillar collagen, fibronectins, elastin, proteoglycans and hyaluronate. And uh, among the basement membrane, basement membrane may, uh, uh, it is produced from where? It is produced not only from the mesenchymal cell, but also from the overlying epithelium. Okay, so I repeat again that the basement membrane material is produced not only from the mesenchymal cell, but also from the overlying epithelium. And this gives a chicken wire mesh appearance. It gives a chicken wire mesh appearance. And what are the components of this base basement membrane? Comprises of only non-fibrillar type 4 collagen. Comprising of only non-fibrillar type 4 collagen, laminin and proteoglycan. Now let us see how we divide extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix can be divided into fibrous structural proteins, water hydrated gels and adhesive glycoproteins. Now under extracellular matrix when we read about fibrous structure proteins, those are the collagen and elastin and unka function kya hai? They mainly function as providing tensile strength and recoil. Whereas the water hydrated gels comprises of the proteoglycans and hyaluronate, unka main dohi function hai, compressive resistance and lubrication. Whereas the adhesive glycoproteins mainly function to connect one another. Coming to the interactions or the functions of the extracellular matrix, there are four kinds of interactions. Number one, they provide mechanical support. Number two, they control cell proliferation. Number three, they provide a scaffolding for tissue renewal and number four, they help in establishment of tissue microenvironment. I repeat, the function of the extracellular matrix is to provide mechanical support, control of cell proliferation, a scaffolding for tissue renewal and establishment of tissue microenvironment. Now coming to collagen. As we all know, collagen is a part of extracellular matrix and again, they are of two main types. One is fibrillar, another one is non-fibrillar. Under the fibrillar type are four main types of collagen. They are type 1, 2, 3 and 5. I repeat, under fibrillar type, there are four main types, 1, 2, 3 and 5. And these are present in the bone, tendon, skin, cartilage, blood vessels, scars and healing tissue. And coming to non-fibrillar type, now here many MCQs come. The type 4 collagen is a major collagen present in the basement membrane. The type 9 collagen is the major collagen involved in collagen to collagen interaction. Whereas the type 7 collagen anchors the basement membrane beneath the epithelium. I repeat the type 4 non-fibrillar collagen hota hai, which is present in basement membrane. The type 9 collagen is helping in collagen to collagen interaction whereas the type 7 collagen is anchoring the basement membrane beneath the epithelium. Let us look at the collagen 
synthesis. Now, it is a, it is a very, very simple way that I have put up this uh, 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 pathway of collagen synthesis. Now, just remember from the DNA, there is formation of mRNA. Okay, from the DNA, there is formation of mRNA and this mRNA undergoes translation. And what is formed over here is something that is called as a pro-collagen. Okay, it is called as a pro-collagen. Okay, so it is called as a pro-collagen. Now, this pro-collagen, when it is translated, okay, from the mRNA, it undergoes hydroxylation of lysine and proline residues followed by glycosylation of lysine residues. So look at these steps. I repeat again. Okay. From the DNA, mRNA is formed. From the mRNA, it, uh, there is translation into a protein called as a procollagen. This procollagen undergoes hydroxylation of lysine and proline residues followed by glycosylation of lysine. Now, all these three steps of translation, hydroxylation and glycosylation is taking place in the endoplasmic reticulum. After this, after glycosylation, there is uh, uh, three such procollagen. They join together to form a triple helix in the Golgi apparatus. I repeat, after glycosylation, three procollagen, they join together to form a triple helix in the Golgi apparatus. After the triple helix formation, this helix comes out into the extracellular fluid space and is now called as a procollagen. So, the triple helix comes out into the extracellular uh, uh, fluid space and now it is called as the procollagen. Now, the procollagen is flanked on either side by propeptides and with the help of endoproteinase activity, there is removal of the propeptides. I repeat, with the help of endoproteinase activity, there is removal of propeptides from the procollagen converting the procollagen into collagen. Now, this collagen undergoes cross-linking. This undergoes cross-linking by lysyl hydroxylysyl oxidation, which is brought about by the enzyme lysyl oxidase and vitamin C. So, I repeat, the collagen undergoes cross-linking with the help of lysyl hydroxylysyl oxidation brought about by lysyl oxidase and by vitamin C. And this cross-linking is actually a very strong covalent bonding. Very strong covalent bonding. So very fast, I repeat all the steps. In the collagen synthesis, the mRNA after translation give rise to a procollagen which undergoes lysine and proline hydroxylation followed by lysine glycosylation. These three steps occurs in endoplasmic reticulum. After this, there is formation. Three procollagen molecules form a triple helix in the Golgi apparatus. That helix comes out into the ECF space and is now called as procollagen. The procollagen has propeptides which is removed and then there is formation of collagen which undergoes cross-linking by lysyl hydroxylysyl oxidation brought about by the enzyme lysyl oxidase and vitamin C and this cross-linking is an example of covalent bonding. Now, let us read something, a few points about elastin. Elastin is mainly responsible for recoil and recovery. Or kaha ka present hota hai in the cardiac valves, blood vessels, uterus, skin and ligaments. So, present in the cardiac valves, blood vessels, uterus, skin and ligaments. It is made up of outer fibrillin and inner elastin. Outer fibrillin and inner elastin. And any defect any defect in elastin will give rise to Marfan syndrome. I am so sorry, I think I forgot to mention, if there is any defect in the collagen, it leads to osteogenesis imperfecta and Ehrenlos syndrome. So we need to remember, so defects in collagen leads to osteogenesis imperfecta and Euler danlos syndrome, whereas the defects in elastin leads to Marfan syndrome. Let us speak about the proteoglycans. These are highly hydrated compre compressile gel. So these are a form of highly hydrated compressile gel. They usually provide resistant 
resistance to compression forces and they are responsible for lubrication in cartilage they are having a high negative charge so they will pull sodium ion and attract water this leads to viscosity so they are having a high charge which pulls the sodium ions and attracts water leading to viscosity and they are a reservoir for growth factors they are reservoirs for growth factors now we read about the adhesive glycoprotein so we are now going to read about the adhesive glycoprotein so there are three main types one is fibronectin one is your laminin and another one agrin so i repeat we are having fibronectin laminin and integrins so what is the role of fibronectin so a fibronectin is having a role in wound healing it is providing a scaffolding for extracellular matrix deposition and it has a role in angiogenesis and also it has a role in reepithelialization now as we know laminin laminin ka most important thing kya it is the most important and the most abundant glycoprotein present in the basement membrane and its main function is to connect one cell to extracellular matrix protein integrins are usually the transmembrane glycoprotein they are mainly present in the leukocytes and form firm adhesion uh, and transmigration so they are responsible for firm adhesion and transmigration of leukocytes in inflammation they are also participating in cell signaling and they also connect cell to extracellular matrix with this we have completed the chapter 1 of robins thank you very much for listening to my classes and my lectures i hope you are taking my notes please don't forget to subscribe and like my videos thank you so much